are in, your world unfolding. Contigo es difícil, es casi imposible. Tú eres de todas y realmente de nadie. Si pudiera yo vivir de nuevo esta vida sin sufrir por amarte, preferiría morir. Nunca pedí que tú me ames, que me descubras tú. Secreto, que me esperes sin paciente, que me dejes por las noches, que me seques lágrimas, que me hagas reír. Solo pedí por amarte. El amor contigo es difícil, es casi imposible. Tú eres de todas y realmente de nadie. Si pudiera yo oh, vivir de nuevo esta vida sin sufrir por amarte, preferiría morir. Nunca pedí que tú me amas, que me descubras tu secreto, que me esperes impaciente, que me dejes por las noches, que me seques lágrimas. Que me hagas reír, solo pedí por te amarte, nunca pedí que me amas y que me descubras tus secretos, que me esperes impaciente, que me dejes por las noches, que me seques lágrimas, que me hagas reír. Solo pedí poder amarte. Thank you very much. Toda la vaca. Sí, lo has. No, I'm just talking with hands. I'm from, I'm from Jerusalem. Everybody does. We're ready? Yeah. Okay. Right, there we go. The song you just heard was called El Amor Contigo, performed by Yasmin Levy for the music show on RN. Welcome, Yasmin. Thank you very much. Can you tell me what does that song mean? What does the name mean? It means uh, love with you or loving you is difficult. Um, you belong to everyone, but you belong to no one. And I've never asked you to love me or to tell me your secrets or... Uh, to miss me or to make me smile, smile. All I ever ask is to loving you. Uh, it's funny. I had an interview when I was in France years, a few years ago, and when I finished the interview, I went to the street walking, and I said to the journalist, "Okay, thank you very much for the interview. Goodbye." And then I just started to sing. El amor contigo es difícil, es casi imposible. Tú eres de todas, y realmente de nadie. And that's it. That was the song, but it just came in one piece. <laughs> Does that happen to you a lot, that songs just pop out? Of course. I always say I, that I usually I go to buy milk or something in a supermarket and I come back home with milk and a song. If I Not try, everyone could say that. Yeah. <laughs> if I really insist uh, to compose something, um, I hardly have any luck. And usually I compose and I write my songs when I'm sad, so uh, 
this is a blessed, blessed sadness. This is where I create. Mm. When I'm happy, again, no luck. Things just, you know, come from me, I believe, from above. Suddenly I have a song and it has a control over my life. It, like it's, it has its own, its own life. It controls me. I can talk to you and I have a melody. And until I get to play it or recording it, it won't let go. It can drive me crazy. But <laughs> it's a good, <laughs> a good thing. It's a beautiful song that you just sang. And what language did you sing that in? It's Spanish. Modern Spanish. And what I wanted to ask you about, though, is that when people hear your name, they immediately hear two other words associated with you, Ladino and Safadi or Safadic. Mm-hmm. And I wanted to ask you to explain those words. What, what is Safadi culture? Uh, Sephardim, uh, it means Sephardad. Sephardad means Spain in Hebrew. So the Jews that lived in Spain and were expelled from Spain in 1492, we call them Sephardim. I myself, I'm Sephardi. My roots are from Spain. Uh, just about the history, uh, the Jews lived in Spain until 1492, you know, like with the Muslims. And they both were expelled at that year by the uh, Catholic rulers, Isabella and Ferdinand. And they were dispersed to many parts of the world, but mainly they went to live in the Ottoman Empire and in North Africa. Now in Spain, they spoke Spanish, like the Christians, but after they left Spain, that that Spanish got mixed with different words of different languages, depend on the place that they went to live in. Jews, for example, like my family, that went to live in Turkey, that Spanish got mixed with Turkish words. Jews who went to live in Bulgaria, it got mixed with Bulgarian words. And the same, same happened in all over the world, and he created a language which is called Ladino. It's an old Jewish Spanish mixed with many different words from many different languages. So what, does, what are the characteristics of Ladino music then? Those songs were never meant to be on stage. Uh, we have to remember that the Jews loved Spain, and they never meant to leave Spain. They were forced to leave Spain, so... The only thing that they could take with them were those songs and, and the memories and the language. So they kept it, you know, close to their hearts. It helped them to survive difficult moments in their lives or to celebrate happy moments. They sang for themselves. Uh, the women sang the secular songs at home while they were cooking and, and, and cleaning uh, to their daughters, like my mother used to sing for me while she was cooking. And the men sang the religious songs in the synagogue to their sons. And that's how we've managed to keep those songs alive for hundreds of years. So the way of singing those songs was just sing, just a voice, a cappella, very simple, very modest. Because people used to treat those songs as something very old and fragile. Then with the years, they started to add Spanish guitar or a classical orchestra, but always modest. The songs are about a love a, longing to Jerusalem, longing to your lover, you know, the kings of Spain, stories and feelings that they had in, in their lives, in the daily life. Can anyone sing those songs, Ladino songs? What does a person have to feel or have in them to be able to really bring those songs to life? Actually, everyone can sing them. They are quite simple, but I always say that whatever you do, you just have to do it with your heart. Um, it's not, for example, like flamenco or fado, that you have to really know the rhythms and, you know, the way of singing. Ladino, it's very simple, but that's the beauty of it. Just mean what you, what you sing. Because I believe that there are many songs which I personally don't sing because I can't believe in them. You know, about, about they sing about the alcohol, uh, which is nice. And there are many songs happy, like more um, funny ones. For me, that I always need a drama and melancholic I, I need to believe in what I sing. So all the funny ones and, you know, to have fun, I, I never touch them because I, I believe that if you want to convince the listener, you have to convince yourself, first of all, when you sing. So that's it. You can, everyone can sing them as long as you do it from your heart. What is it about the melancholy songs that, that draws you to them? Why are, they, why are they something that feels natural for you to sing, do you think? This is my character. I always say that I'm the happiest person with the uh, biggest sadness in his heart. Um, to be honest, I thought for many years that I have problem because people used to ask me all the time, why, why are you being so melancholic? Because I'm, I'm a happy person. Uh, but when I'm happy, I cannot create as much as I try and I cannot express myself. And I have, you know, it's a block for me. 
So this sadness is a gift, I believe, from God for me. And this is where I feel more connected and touched. And, and this is my being. And after a few years, I just let go of it. And I realized that some people came to touch you through happiness. And some came to touch you through sadness. And I believe that I'm from the people who touches through sadness. It's also a way to make you happy. You know, you cry, you, you take it all out. So this is, this is me. I know that, that you come from a big tradition of, of singers in your family. Your father has been very important in preserving Ladino music and culture. Was it an expected thing that you would become a singer, that you would be in the music industry? Uh, not at all. I did everything I could to avoid from becoming a singer. Really? I grew up in a family of uh, two singers. My, my life always was, they were full of music. Um, but my father, who was a musician and a cantor, you know, uh, he dedicated his life to music. He was afraid of this world, of this life. That's not a normal life. You know, I'm traveling with my son now. It's a gypsy life. You hardly see your family and, and your home. Um, but I would never change it. You know, that, that's, if I do something else, I'll, I'll be sad. Uh, but my father wanted us, you know, the Jewish mind. He asked us, asked us all to have a real profession. Music, we all had to play piano since we were six years old, but just as a hobby. I mean, you should go play good. Does that mean he didn't think he had a real profession because he was a singer and an ethnomusicologist? It was so many other things. He was the manager of um, the director, I'm sorry, of the uh, Ladino um, department in the radio. He was a teacher of languages. He spoke uh, nine languages fluently. Wow. He did many things. But then, you know, life took him to dedicate, him, to dedicate his life. You know, his destiny was to, to be a musician. But he was afraid of that. And all my brothers and sisters, they, they did what he asked them to do. Even though he passed away, you know, when we were all young, uh, he was, a, you know, this great figure in our lives. We were all affected by, still are, by what he said. And my mom uh, still speak of him as, as, as if she, he is alive. So my brothers became uh, engineers, my sister lawyers, and everybody expected me to to have some education. So until the age of 22, I was deceiving myself, trying to convince myself that I'm, I'm not a singer, that I can't sing. But then I, I realized that I was deceiving myself and only at the age of 22, I started to sing. Your father recorded and kept a huge number of, of traditional Ladino songs. Are you considered a, a traditional singer when it comes to Ladino music? Is your style a traditional style? No, I'm totally the opposite of that. Uh, I'm definitely not the cup of tea of the traditional people. Why is that? Um, I didn't understand that for many years, but I do now. I mean, it took me a while until I realized that those people grew up listening to something in a very particular way. Their mothers used to sing for them when they were babies, those songs lullabies and things like, like that. And that's why they, that they expected me to sing like that. And then come this young woman, I was 22 years old, and I couldn't treat those songs as, as you know, something that you bring uh, from the museum. I used to treat those songs always like something young and passionate. And I wanted to bring myself. So I changed the way of singing because everybody used to sing the same, beautiful, but the same, you know, like something very soft and nice. And I'm not a nice singer. Everything is so extreme with me. And for some people, it's very hard to listen to me. There's no middle with me. Either you like me or you cannot stand me. And, but I, at least I bring myself. So I brought myself to those songs and I changed the arrangement because I wanted to make those songs more approachable to people who have nothing to do with this tradition and to, with this language. Uh, so my, my way took me, you know, I, it took me to a different place. Uh, I think together we live together in peace, me and the traditional people, but each and one of us respect the other way, the other's way. Uh, and I can tell you just that today, 
they appreciate my my hard work and my contribution to this same uh, tradition is your way of singing a way of keeping Ladino alive keeping it vibrant I'm not keeping the language alive people keep saying this to me it's not true I don't even speak Ladino I speak Spanish which is quite similar but that's that's why I understand Ladino but if you don't speak a language if you don't use it a daily use you can't keeping keep it alive I do see myself as a butterfly who flies from one flower to another and spreading those songs I bring them to life those songs um that's not there there is no secret you know it's not a secret that the language is an endangered language and my generation no longer speak Ladino and the people who do speak we are talking about less than five hundred the one hundred fifty thousand people worldwide and they are all eighty ninety years old and in two generations from now when they die unfortunately there'll be no speakers left yeah you could find it in archives and you can go to the university learning it but You won't leave the language, so the language won't, won't leave. The thing that will survive, I believe, are those songs. It's like Mozart and Bach. They are no longer with us, but their music, it has its own life. That's it. It's a, it's a whole world. And that's how I see those songs. They are so beautiful. They will keep uh, living, you say, yeah? in, in people, people's hearts, and people will keep singing them with or without my help. So I'm just doing my thing in my modest way. You've just released a new album, and um, there are at least five songs on that album that are, that are you're written by you. Yeah. And I wonder, when you first became a, you know, a name everyone knew, people associated you with Ladino singing. And I wonder, is there a, a tension for you between what people expect you to do and what you want to be doing in terms of music? I always insisted not... Uh, To do what people are expecting me to do, I have to be faithful to myself because uh, I have to I want to look when I'm 50, 60 years old. I want to look back and be happy with my choices, even if I'm going to do mistakes, I want, I want to do those mistakes because they will make me develop. Uh, and I never wanted people to listen to me because. Because, because of Ladino, of course. The beginning was that people came because of Ladino songs. But I don't want people to replace me with another singer and keep, sing, keep hearing, you know, listening to her because it's Ladino. I don't want to be in this uh, frame, in a box. I want people to listen to me, to what I have to say, to my interpretation. Uh, so it took me something like eight years. And I know that people now come to listen to me. Those who come to listen to Ladino... Uh, Some get disappointed, but <laughs> you have to be faithful to yourself. Otherwise, you won't get anywhere and you'll be frustrated and people won't believe you. And I know that today, my audience trusts me. And whatever I do, I do it always with respect to the original, to the fountain of Ladino songs. This is who I am. This is my being. But I want to express myself also as an artist and as a person. And I have a lot to say. So I compose and write my own songs as well. Mm. The new album is called Libertad, meaning freedom. Yes. Why did you give it that name? Uh, two reasons. I'm about to be 27. No, I'm kidding. 37. Uh, I finally feel free in my life. I had many fears, uh, like every other human being. But it was very strong with me. I had ups and deep downs. And when my son was born, I realized that I need to be strong for him, if not for myself, for him. And I had a long journey with myself, and I finally feel strong as ever. I will have those downs as well, again, I mean, but I'm as strong as, er as ever, so this is my freedom. The other reason is that I, I'm a free, modern uh, woman, you know, I get to do what I want, I do. I have a beautiful husband my, who I love, who supports me. Uh, and it seems like something obvious for you, for me, that we are free. But it's not the case for many other women in, those, in this world, especially in religious uh, societies. And I get to see it wherever I travel. Women have no right to work, to get married with the people they want, the men they want. They have no right to have a license, driving license, or to vote. You know, things that for us is a basic thing. 
Um, and it was painful. It hurts me. It touches me. And so I can't change the world. And I know that as it's very easy to come from my my from this chair and saying you know this message of of freedom but as a musician i think i can at least express my my feelings so i wanted to call all these women to first of all know that they have the right to have freedom we all deserve that every creature not only human being and i encourage them to fight for their dreams and for their their uh, freedom and happiness Your music is um is very popular in countries all over the world, but you you know you were born in Israel, and I understand your music is very popular in in Iran as well as places like Turkey. What does that say to you about the way music can affect people? It says to me that first of all, we are all human being, and in Turkey and in Iran, no one judges me by me being Israeli or Jewish. I was invited to uh, perform in Istanbul in Turkey by the mayor of Istanbul when it was a uh, great tension between Israel and Turkey. And people used to ask me, why are you going to Turkey? Aren't you afraid? And look what happened between us. And I said, no, I believe that I'm one of the few common, uh, common sense or the, the logical voice that is left. If you shut my mouth, you close the door. To the common sense you can bring to that situation, yeah. to that's another why, view. That's why me personally, I'm against a boy, boycotting a, a artists because then there is no other way to speak. Mm. My name is Michaela Kolofsky. I'm speaking with Yasmin Levy on the music show for RN. Yasmin, on the new album, there's a beautiful song which you perform with a woman called Concha Buica. I think yes. I'm saying her name right. Um, how did you two meet? How did that song come about? We come from the same musical area. We both consider to be world music uh, singers. Uh, we know each other for a few years now, but never uh, spoke about doing anything, uh, doing, you know, something uh, in common. I met her something like a year ago in Poland. I saw her a few years, you know, we saw each other. But this time was very special for, for both of us. I think she kind of fell in love with my uh, baby boy. She had something very high, uh, strong with him. Uh, and we just, you know, I don't know, we hugged each other and, and, and she said, Let, let's do something together. And it was a great compliment for me because I, I really adore her. I, I think she's a, she's a great singer. Uh, she's very intelligent as a musician um, and in general. Um, and she has a beautiful soul. Um, it was a, in a very difficult moment for me with my own recording. Uh, so Buika said, let's do something together. And I said, I have this most important song for me, which I wrote for my aunt uh, who passed away recently. Uh, would you like to sing this one with me? If, if you're going to sing with me, I'm going to stop all the recording. And she said, of course, I'm going to sing with you. I want your aunt to listen to our voices and up there above, and so she will know that she's being loved. And after two weeks, we had this duet. And when you accept the, the other, the way he is, and you bring yourself, and he respects you, you create together harmony and something which is bigger than, than yourself. And the same we do in music. And for example, me and Buika, we both b brought our voices, our talent, our love, our hearts, and we created something which is much more beautiful and bigger than what I could have with myself. So I, I shared this song with her and she shared with me her love and, and her voice. And that's how we should act in, in our daily life. I noticed in the list of wonderful musicians who are touring with you, that there are musicians from uh, uh, Israel, Britain, Armenia, Turkey and Iran. Yes, And true. I wonder, you know, what it is that brings people together who in some other room might be in opposition to each other, but they can cooperate together? It's a music. Uh, there's no need to speak. You know, I had, at the same time, I had an, Ira a, an Armenian a musician together with a Turkish one, and we all know their history. When they came to the rehearsal the first time, they hugged each other. They didn't even speak. There's no need to speak. No need to ask, where are you coming from? This is just for fun. But there's no room to fight. And... You just take your flute and you play and your friend take the guitar and 
you start to jam. And we're privileged to have this in our lives, all, all of us, the musicians. And I'm happy and I'm privileged to have them in my life. They make my life much more colorful, you know. Yasmin Levy, thank you very much for being a guest on The Music Show on RN. Thank you so much for inviting me. It's been a pleasure. Thank you. RN, your world unfolding.